Inky Divide is the crown jewel of the Biking Man Race series. This is where everything began with the series and this is where everything is played with the highest cycling playground and one of the toughest exploration playground on the planet. It combines everything around exploration with uh, high altitude, very remote areas and uh, a very challenging terrain to battle with uh, a bikepacking configuration. This is the ultimate challenge for adventurous athletes that want to tackle the Andes Mountains, the longest mountain range in the world. I'm going to be pushing my body harder than I'll have pushed it ever before. I will be more fatigued and sleep deprived than I've ever been before. I will be in a, a foreign con country where I don't speak the language. The course is not, it is beyond incredibly tough. It's a, it's a phenomenally challenging course with huge amounts of elevation gain, the altitude will be playing a part, um, the weather will be playing a part, everything about this is creating an adventure and a challenge and an exploration and, and that is what is so inspiring about this, this event, this is it's a great step into the unknown. Yesterday was brutal and amazing beautiful, yeah. And the difference of temperature is unbelievable. I got 38 degrees and the bottom five degrees over here, but it was, oh, the, the road is very well paved and amazing, amazing beautiful. It's more like a, a spiritual journey, yeah. If, if, you, if, if you don't have the mindset for it, it, it doesn't matter if, you're, if your body has the power enough it, it's like I feel tired now, but much more by by my head than by my body. It, it's it's like a, a magical place. You 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 you're climbing and never stop climbing, and and you look at your side and you see the, all the mountains and and stuff and all the the clouds on your head, and and it, it never ends. It's crazy. I don't know. The more you ride, the less you've got to go, I suppose. And that's the best way to think of it. <laughs> go out there to, to race Neil or Rodney or anyone else in the series, you go out there to find out what you're made of. And so whether you finish first or, you know, 1053, it means nothing. You know, what mean what what matters is that you come away with a better understanding of yourself. And I, I believe that every time you go away on any trip like this, the key is to come away from it learning a little bit more about yourself. If you're just going and repeating things and you understand what you're doing and how it happens, then, you know, what you're actually gaining from it, very little, but with these bigger races, because there's so many variables, if you were to go and do Biking Man Oman, five years in a row, you know you're gonna get a puncher at a different place each time. You know that, like, something's gonna happen at a different place. You know that store you're gonna get there sooner isn't gonna be open, so you can't resupply. So this is what I love about the races. I can't wait for the experience. I think this is what excites me about this race. Yeah, yes, it's a race and we're here to compete and, and try and see how well we can do, but this is gonna be the, the real experience. This is gonna either make me or break me, and I, I have to have the attitude that, that it's gonna make me. So I think after three days, it all it it all changed for me because I just I didn't have any energy to be scared anymore. I had to put it into actually riding my bike. Each day you get progressively more fatigued, you get more tired, and and you get more vulnerable to 
the emotions, even if you're normally a very level-headed kind of person. So in that respect, yes, you're constantly becoming more exposed to yourself. I think for me the, the emotion is an expression of the happiness. I felt such overwhelming joy at what I was doing. I, right now, my feeling about this kind of challenge became stronger. To participate in a race, this is a race, has a position, but enjoying those, those, those times, doing uh, some, uh, some choices or making some choices for that is not racing, is enjoying or to to look for, okay, I will sleep in the beginning of the night to not ride at night because it's more safe. But I lost one position. I lost two positions because of that, but it was my choice. I'm happy to do so. That's, that's something that I really want to share with everybody. We are riding a race, but you, you have to start this race and make some choice or change your race to make yourself happy. First two days were the toughest because you know you've got such a long time to go afterwards and I just kept plucking away and with getting into the altitude in the mountains and realizing things are taking a lot longer than you think and then it gets dark a lot earlier that you then realize that your six day target has gone to seven gone to eight gone to nine and you, you just sit there thinking when when will this end and it, it was just so mentally tough. Physically you can just ride and then you go to sleep and then you wake up in the morning and then you ride again but mentally you just wake up and you just want to cry and you just look for reasons not to carry on riding. Cañón del Pato is maybe one of the nicest roads in the world. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a privilege to be able to pedal through this, through this canyon, through, through this road. It's, it's amazing, it's amazing. Uh, we did a, a, a shortcut going through the coast, which is not very nice. We, we missed some of the, of the places in the High Line, which are nice. But right now, we're going to the nicest places. Uh, this is maybe one of the nicest roads in the world. Cordillera Blanca is maybe one of the nicest places in the world. So we're, we're heading into into very, very nice place and scenery. When, when you like an adventure, it's maybe you like to be in places like this where you don't find much people, where you don't find much services. I think that that's adventure. I don't think that is, is possible to have an immediate transformation, but you see different other challenges. It's not that the other time will be easy. I think you'll be more prepared for the adversities of the next challenge. Uh, when I compare it with the transcontinental, we don't have to suffer or that much because you can choose your route as here, but the altitude and the temperature is different because the, the season is different, the place is different. There I can slept almost everywhere. Over here, no. I have to choose carefully where to sleep, where to eat, 
or which route to pick to find some places to sleep. I, I saw some guys slept in barns in, in, in some villages without almost any support. But this is part of the race, this is part of the route that they, they pick. Yeah, that's my definition of the unbelievable heart. I, I didn't expect that and it was so nice. just mind-blowing it's stunning um, the last three hours climbing up to Punta Olimpica has been kind of like an out-of-body experience just the further up you get the more or the less oxygen you have the more you just kind of tunnel vision narrowing down onto the road in front of you and all you can think of is just I want to get to the top I want to get to the top and put some clothes on I want to get to the top and record a video so that everyone can see how amazing it is but how kind of emotional it is I want to get to the top and record a video to tell my wife I loved her um, just went through so many different emotions going up there it was just it was amazing it was really amazing Our plan was to not to ride long night and not to sleep in the high altitude. And then I chose me and Fabian to sleep uh, in a city, uh, I think two or three days ago. And then we are far, four hours, or at least for 40 kilometers day by day. That's, that's our plan. We don't want to ride long nights or too cold, to sleep low. That's the plan. I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling the altitude. <laughs> it's hard for me. I, I don't, I don't have this preparation for so high altitude. Then I, I keep it at this more, I don't know, traditional. You know, no, ne, not able to eat, antibiotics, altitude, it's killing me, <laughs> I'm destroyed, but yeah, I will con try to continue. Unbelievable, like, you know, no matter what you do in your, like in my cycling, it's never anything that's ever, I think, gonna be that tall or that challenging. Like, I can honestly say, I think this race, the Inca Divide, it will either make you or it will break you, full stop.
the first climb was brutal and the, the view shows something I think a, a little glimpse what is what is coming and then after Cajamarca well we, we, we rode over the Andes saw those beautiful views we were blessed the views so amazing so amazing and the, the, the personal challenge I never rode in so negative so low temperatures like that negatives and so high after uh, above 2000 and then we I reach my body limits or I see my body adapting day by day and reach new limits that's so unbelievable for me so unbelievable This, this race for me approached everything I was ever scared of about adventure cycling and, um, and bike packing. I was so scared of, you know, wild dogs. I was so scared of, you know, complete ruralness. I was scared of getting to places and there not being anywhere to sleep. I slept in a barn this time, you know, like you just have to make these choices. And for me, I'm just, I feel like I'm going home a completely new person. I feel like I've really, tapped into a, a primal side of myself which I never ever knew was there, something that isn't just about cycling but it's about survival and I think this race has completely changed me as a cyclist, as someone who lost adventure, from being someone that I don't thrive at anymore, I can survive it now and that's, that's the key for me, this race is, it, I feel completely reborn to the fact I've been so broken that now I've been built up as this kind of person that can just get through absolutely anything. <risa> muy dura, muy dura. Salimos de. ¿De qué? De. Cara, cara, después de, de Pachacoto, sí, salimos a las 4 de la mañana. Un frío, según mi amigo, teníamos unos 8 grados bajo cero. pero se paga con estas vistas muy chévere demasiada aventura le pusiste ahora sí primera vez que pedaleo bajo cero grados estuve a punto de regresarme por un momento en oscuridad a menos 5 grados pero bueno después salió el sol empecé a ver los nevados y sentí que valía la pena ahora que arriba creo que ya lo logramos Vale la pena intentarlo. 
I had a very interesting debate with somebody before I came out here as to the nature of adventure and what, what, what makes something an adventure. And the argument was that this was so well prepared for and, and it was all known that actually this was a challenge, not an adventure. I think I would, I think if you talk to anybody who did this, this was an adventure. Because for everybody, things happened that had potentially very serious consequences. If, if adventure is putting yourself into the unknown where you're not always in full control of the outcome, then this definitely hit that. And you have to make the right decision. It's that right decision that turns from, that keeps it to an adventure rather than turning it to a disaster. Yeah, adventure is, is where you take that step into the unknown and where you, you, you're not totally sure of what the outcome might be. But you know you're going to have to make the right decisions to keep it, uh, to keep it going smoothly. And, and that's what I'll look back on. It was an odyssey, I think. It was a real journey of, uh, journey of exploration, a journey of discovery, uh, a journey of pushing myself um, beyond where I thought I could go. It was, yeah, and I say this about all of the, I've said this about, I said this about a man and, and, I, and I'll say about this again, but it, it was life changing. Because you just really, you plumb such depths of what you're capable of that you never realised you could do. And every time you do that, you just learn something more about yourself. Uh, you learn more about what you're capable of, both physically, yes, but also mentally mentally in terms of the mental toughness, but also mentally in terms of how you can uh, adapt and execute on your strategy and your planning. I cried for the last two hours riding. I can honestly say, like, I'm a grown man, but I'm happy to say, because I was just so broken. And it, all I could think of when I was riding down the last stretch of highway, I was just like, I, I'm just going to blow my eyes out. I mean, I wasn't upset, I wasn't glad it was over. I was just enlightened. That was it. I, I, I can't say I crossed happy or sad. I just crossed thinking, this is life, you know, and this is, this is the new me. That, that week has changed me for the rest of my life, and now I'm this new person, so I felt reborn. La normalidad que es acá es la anormalidad que ellos podrían ver. Por ejemplo, los pueblos que hay a 4000, las caras de las personas, el, el cómo te miran, el respiro, el cómo te hablan, la comida, la experiencia propia de, de, de todo este mundo completamente diferente, creo que, que sea un europeo o que sea también un ecuatoriano o un chileno, es completamente diferente. Entonces creo que también escuchándolos, acabando toda la carrera. No es, es tan grato, claro, por haber acabado la carrera, pero también por la experiencia tan grande, porque es, en poco tiempo aprendes mucho. Entonces, casi, casi te mueve tu alma en un modo diferente. ¿no? <música>